Greetings. That's going to be a, another fun day in Okim. Uh, last time we left off, we were working on our OCaml server and um, doing ETL uh, with data from my air quality monitor into a database. And we also fired up a UI, and everything was going swimmingly. Um, yeah, let's just like uh, run all the stuff just to reacquaint, uh, you know, where we are, and uh, you know, see what the app's doing thus far. So I'm gonna fire up the DB, RDB, rad DB, and it looks like, uh huh, uh huh. I purge the database and since last time we ran, so I gotta restart it. Cool, database is up. Let's go ahead and start the server application. If it will start, red start. Nope, of course it won't start uh, because user fresh does not exist in the database. Wah, wah, wah. Bummer. Uh, let's see, timescale db role fresh doesn't exist. Oh, well, that's surprising. Um, Create user fresh, create database fresh. Yeah, that was uh, genuinely surprising. Uh, we must have changed something uh, since the last time we got together. That shouldn't be too hard to root cause. Uh, database system is shutting down, starting up. It should have ideally made us made it clear that um, yeah, create extension. I think that's part of the normal thing. Yeah, let's just go quickly revisit what the database test does and add some additional logging there. Uh, DB. Remove some old Docker container. Fire this thing off and try to run the DB init scripts a couple times. Okay, sure. Uh, let's add some log level stuff to that and just study the output. This is the first time I've observed this particular failure. Okay, whoa, ED init, db initialized. Okay, so it did successfully execute the init task. Uh, let's just try starting again. <laughs> okay, it was just a race condition. No worries, not gonna fix it. This is a development only script. And cool, the server is up, and the server ultimately will um, have a different role when we go to production later. But for now, for now, it's acts as a endpoint where I can make a request against it and it will query my air quality monitor and load data right into the database. So I'm just gonna do localhost 8000. And look, there we go. We've got all sorts of great data from the air quality monitor. And uh, further, if I actually ask the database, well, excuse me, if I ask the API to read the data back from the database, uh, I can do that as well. And there you have it, there's an entry in the database. Now you'll notice that it only gave one record back. Why is that? Um, because we updated the query last time we uh, worked on the project to actually time bucket. Time bucket, uh, 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 its queries based on certain ranges. So I think by default it does it by hourly. And so we're binning the average of the data that comes in within a, ter within a certain time window. So uh, I could probably add another data point in a little bit. And we can maybe even add a binning value equals minute. And look, we actually got two entries when we binned on minutes because I've updated the database twice or <laughs> over the span of at least two minutes. Great, let's head over to the UI. And we'll make sure that's still working. Very cool. And here it is. Uh, only one data point when I've been on hour, but when I've been on minute, there it is. We got two data points. The units are not correct right here. Um, you know, the score is not 11. It's actually like 90. 90. You know, it's a it's a zero to 100 range for score. Um, so I did some bad math. That's fine. I don't really care about that right now. The fact that I'm doing the math and getting the data structurally in the way I want it is in fact the more interesting part. <coughs> okay, cool. Um, so uh, uh, last time 
in between last time we were pairing and uh, now, um, I realized, hey, what the application that is the server architecturally, it, it still needs to continue to be the server, but it fundamentally needs to change. Um, the deployment model for this application is going to be as follows. On a computer I already have inside of my local network, specifically I have a network assist storage, network attached storage, a NAS drive, and it's already a computer, it's already always running, and you know, it's in my home, it's in my internet. Um, I don't want to have to run another computer to harvest data and send that data, you know, up into the cloud where I can store that data, you know, in the database here. Um, so what I'm going to change, you know, this application to be is both a server and an agent. It will accept a flag, you know, dash dash agent or dash 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 server. And depending on the flag, it'll do two very different things. Um, if it's using the agent flag, it will simply uh, query the sensor and it will forward that sensor data off to some host. Really simple. So the end goal there is I can compile it to ARM and uh, you know set it up as a service on on my NAS. NAS, I'll never know. And then if I run it in server mode, it will receive data from the agent, load it into the database, and then also be there to provide data um, back to the web application. So uh, one program two modes. Yeah, this is actually quite common to what uh, Splunk does. You can run their app in like forward mode or server mode. Um, yeah, which is kind of cool. Uh, uh, so that's what I'm going to do. Now, um, further, when I looked into this, uh, I realized, you know, right now I'm not accepting very many CLI args. So let's go look at what we actually are accepting. Oh gosh, control Z. You know, bin fresh ML. This is the entry point. Since last time we met, I did update this a little bit. I updated it uh, in the following ways. <clears throat> You'll see there's this let syntax, and that's coming from core command. And it's essentially a way for core command let syntax is a way for me to just add an arg parser to this. So, you know, I'm adding a flag for port, and I'm adding a flag for aware. And so, uh, you know, this one's for server mode, and this one is for uh, 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 agent mode. And so I, I probably also should add one right now for um, agent mode. So let's do that. Uh, the syntax here is, and by the way, this is using an OCaml preprocessor to let you use this and keyword and this map open to let you just kind of uh, in a very linear, imperative-looking fashion uh, construct uh, flags uh, into your CLI. So I'm going to add a doc. <laughs> no, 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 no. I'm going to add another flag. It's going to be doc, and it's going to be um, run as agent. <coughs> and it will be dash dash agent. And it will be optional, and it will be a bool. Or is it a boolean? Looks like bool. I liked that. Similarly, I probably need to add another flag for run as server. Server. And cool, cool. Yeah, and those will come through. Uh, 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 oh, I need to name them, of course. Agent equals server. I'm going to say is server and is agent. And I can use those down here. Now, they're unused right now. That's fine. Um, I'll use them shortly. Something that I considered uh, uh, between then and there as well is right now, this just, you know, we were just starting the server blindly. I created a new type that is a config object. You can see lib fresh server config. Let's see if I can click into it. No, it's going to be mean. Bummer. Uh, let's browse to it then. Type. Yeah, it's just got a port and um, an endpoint. Yeah, 
nothing fancy there, nothing special there. Uh, 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 it, it struck me that it could be a bit of a nuisance, you know, with so much of the time when we do configuration, um, some people just don't do configuration pass config through. They just, uh, you know, hard code it in in the middle of their program. They read the environment in the middle of their program. Uh, maybe they don't have a single config object. They kind of take individual config things, just kind of pipe them through the program, and, you know, the roots of that config might not be centralized at one part um, in your application. And one of the reasons I was interested in using OCaml at all was um, I commonly do a pattern where, you know, I'll build up a config, I'll validate that config, and then I will send it once, you know, not only just config, but resources in general. Uh, once at the entry point of my application, I'll just pass all of those resources um, in at the root, and or thunks to create them, whatever, <coughs> uh, 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 and then make sure anything that needs those resources receive it as input, uh, essentially dependency injection. And one of the reasons I was interested in OCaml was that it has algebraic effects. And I thought, well, wouldn't it be nice to not have to all over my program accept additional config arguments everywhere and have all of this middle layer in my application that's just concerned with configuration? Wouldn't it be nice just to imperatively say, do thing, and then not have to provide the implementation details or unpack the config right there and just be able to do the thing? And that's kind of what Algebraic Effects likes me do. Um, maybe I don't actually pass in a configuration, you know, downstream into starting my server or starting the agent. Perhaps right here at the root, I just, you know, wrap everything in an effect handler. And when anything downstream needs a resource, it just says effect, get resource, uh, or do thing, <laughs> and my effect handler is right here. Um, uh, uh, provide those. And I think... You know, I've never programmed that way, ever. Uh, and I still haven't done it now, but it's something I'm super interested in learning, and um, I'm going to try it, and I'm probably going to struggle and fail. Why open versus open? Oh, Dave, you're just a big chat guy now, huh? You know what? I'm going to jump into Discord chat so we can all chat together if anybody wants. Oh, man, competing streams. Ben is streaming. There we go. I'm now chatting in public. Uh, why open <laughs> versus open? No idea. No idea. I copied and pasted that line. One day, I'm going to look it up, and I'm going to find out. Yeah, well, you know, Ben's a copycat. I was a streamer guy number one. I even have a schedule posted. <laughs> I'm just kidding. I'm not kidding, but Ben's stream is very interesting as well. <sighs> Okay, so algebraic effects. Um, turns out you need to use a specialty compiler to use algebraic effects. You can't just use the off-the-shelf compiler. They're working on bringing in effects into the normal OCaml compiler. It's just not done yet, and they've been kind of talking about it for a hey. long time. Hey, Margaret, I'm on the phone. Okay. I'm doing my stream. Oh, I turned off the oven because... Uh, well, it heated up so fast and you were gone, so Did I you just. Do the toaster oven? The toaster oven, yeah. Okay. You're gonna have to restart it. Alright. Yeah, yeah, so um, I was asking around in the OCaml. Uh, in the OCaml Easy Channel if anyone had set up multi core OCaml. And this gentleman, Manas. Uh, essentially did, but he's using a older version of OCaml multi-core, uh, and I actually need a newer version such that Dune can, which is the OCaml build tooling of choice, can in fact um, resolve it, or sorry, just do good work. And unfortunately I wasn't able to get multi-core to work with the easy package manager, which is a real bummer. I was super uh, looking forward to getting that to work. Um, so I'm going to try not using that <laughs> and just use good old-fashioned OPAM 
and see what happens. Now, I did make a couple changes to my program. I should probably make sure those still run. Of course, they do not. Unused variable. Let's just see if we can't get those errors to go away. Scary ghost. All right, cool. Uh, go ahead and commit that. Get commit dash m feet add agent server flags. Cool. And what next? What next is I need to start using a new OPAM switch to try and use effects. Uh, how do we do that? So OCaml multi-core. Here it is. Teach me OCamlers. How do I use you? Okay, it's a shared memory parallel extension of the OCaml compiler. Uh, yeah, this is the thing we want. If you want to try out multi-core OCaml, the easiest way is to install the compiler using OPAM. Well, yeah, that's a, definitely what I want to do. Um, okay, here we go. Let's see, switch create. Multi-core. So it says switch create 410 multi-core. Yeah, that sounds good. And then OCaml variants. OCaml secondary compiler. Uh, all right. Let's try it. OCaml multi-core. Ah, man. OPAM update. And, you know, I'm going to have to additionally <coughs> install all of this malarkey um, into that switch. Although not at gen. Uh, that should have been removed. I think I might have updated uh, this project on a different computer. OPAM upgrade? It asked me to do that. Oh, to apply package updates. Uh, no, don't do that. We're going to switch. We're going to use a different switch. So, different switch. What is that? Uh, an OPAM switch is kind of like a virtual environment. As it's commonly referred to in other languages. Just a standalone, isolated bucket to load all sorts of dependencies into. So I guess while that's going, I can I can kind of probably bring a lot of this stuff over. So let's do that. Uh, oops. Control C, Control N, Control V, and I'm not gonna have to bring over that. Ooh, ooh, OCaml. OPAM, how to use git. Mm, mm, mm. Okay, we have to figure out how to use OPAM with git. OPAM install from GitHub. Usage. Uh, yeah, sure. Upgrade. Uh huh. Uh huh. Look up packages. Uh huh. Well, I don't want to do it from the OPAM index. I want to do it. Yeah. That's what we gotta do. OPAM pin. OPAM lib. Uh-huh. There we go. Yep. Alright, we're gonna have to do that for a couple of these. So we got Dune. We can use the normal Dune. Merlin, we can use the normal Merlin. But LSP? No, 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 no. You're gonna be special. Reformat error, you're great. But I don't actually need you. Reason native, really? I'm not sure what you even are. Really is just inspired reason testing framework. Oh, well, that's pretty nice, but I'm not using you. OPAM URI, I'm using you. ODOC, I might be using you. Let's bring you along. And let's get some of these other packages going. 
Let's get all of these packages going. Is this thing still compiling? What is going on? I mean, I guess I'm compiling a compiler, so maybe that takes a while. Hey, look! It ran. Um, eval, opam, n? Cool, 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 cool. Uh, opam, what is it, switch, dash b? Cool, so it shows that I'm using the OCaml secondary compiler, OCaml variants, multi-core. Awesome. All right, so let's get these other dependencies in here. OCaml easy reason. Uh, I don't think I need that. And easy PostgreSQL. I do need that one, just like I need OPAM LSP server. But I'm going to have to use custom resolution for that one. Uh, there's that one. Where's the other resolutions? Here it is. And this is the version of PostgreSQL I want to use. So I have to use this OPAM pin command. Open. This command allows one to pin a package to a specific version. There's been extent, extended to allow for much more than that. So opam pin add easy postgresql. And how's this going to work? Um, https github.com blah blah blah. Okay. There we go. Let's try it. Hey man, what's going on? Oh god, something terrible's happened. Okay, let's try that again. Copy, paste. Hey, package easy Postgres SQL does not exist. Create a new package. Ugh. Uh, I don't know what that means. Create a new package, but sure. All right, error getting source from this code, 404 while downloading. Really? Not found. All right, tell me more. Oh, it's got a custom OPAM uh, file right there, sure. I got to get that out of the URL probably. Let's try this one. Uh, error getting source unknown archive type man what's up what are exactly are you building with the aware oh Dave you didn't see it I uh, did a little thing over here I can show you uh, cd fresh aware UI so, uh, just to recap, Dave, um, well, ah, man, oh, the server's not running. i got to start the server. I'm building a app called, um, oh my gosh, I can't think one thing at a time. I'm building a thing that just harvests air quality data, puts it into the database in the cloud, and then an app to let me view it in timescale DB. So I can switch the varying, um, uh, I can switch the resolution that I look at my air quality data because right now the aware product only lets me look at charts daily and I wanted to see more macro trends from it. And so how, what this is gonna do is, is the architecture of this is multi-part. I'm going to compile a agent uh, to an ARM, or, you know, an ARM CPU, which will which will load on a little network-assisted storage that's running on my network, and then that will post um, some data uh, to an API that I'm going to host in the cloud, and then from the cloud, I will then you know access through some authentication mechanism uh, my little web app, which will then hit the same by. The same compiled binary, but not for ARM. It will be for you know, X AMD64 or x86-64, which will be running in Docker uh, as a server that will then host and serve up 
that uh, database data from the database. <laughs> that database data from the database. Yeah. So uh, one app in OCaml that runs as an agent inside the network, one app, same app in OCaml that runs as a server in the cloud, and then this database in the cloud, all to host this little web app. And um, I will show you right now, but it's being a little grouch. It's being a little grouch because I modified my dependencies since I started explaining that. That's okay. I'll just uh, reload those depths. <coughs> and I'll run rad s or rad start. And of course, it's, it has to recompile a bunch of crap. Well, it's recompiling crack. I'm going to be doing some Googling. Cool. So the server started on port 8000. Now if I bring over this app, or this React app here. So yeah, you can see I've got this like chart. And uh, there's not much data in the database right now. <laughs> um, but yeah, here's some, let's turn off PM2. Like, yeah, I, I can see I've got two data points when I'm binning on a minutely interval. I can also bin on an hourly interval and then it averages all of the data points captured within the hour. And as you can tell, there's only one data point because I just started the database. I've loaded a bunch of data into the database, but they're all within that hour, so they all get averaged into one point. And so, yeah, uh, uh, you know, I'll be able to very quickly kind of dive in and see my, you know, micro and macro trends and the charts interactive and very cool. And uh, uh, further, I can, you know, toggle on and off different attributes I'm interested in studying with this beautiful little graph thing, which is pretty dope. And that's what I'm up to. Yeah. <sighs> okay, thank you, OCaml server. You've been a delight. You've been just a delight. And what was the error when I got when I tried to pin this thing? Unknown archive type. Right. Yeah, I know that, uh, but you're not looking for the right OPAM file. You're not looking for the right OPAM file. Uh, can I use, can I use, uh, how to install a specific branch? Let's go here. Installing OPAM. You know what, OPAM pin dash help. It allows local customization. Add package URL. That's right. If a packet definition is not found in the package source tree, it will be used locally. Uh, if or if or dash is specified, the package is pinned without the source archive. The package name can be omitted if the target is a directory containing one or more valid package definitions. This allows one to do opam pin add. Oh, maybe I can drop the package name from this URI. Look at, oh, man. <laughs> it did identify that it was easy PostgreSQL. But it still doesn't know the archive type. I don't know what to do about this error. Let's go look, read the man pages one more time. The package is the form name version. The package will be considered blah. Uh, list add package target. Uh, yeah. Move. Unfortunately, I don't think. I don't know if this has enough information for me to figure out what's going on. I might have to, might have to Google this. Taking it to Google. Pew. That's not at all what I wanted to do. This is what I wanted to do. What? 
Actually, let's see if I can look inside that directory. That would be interesting. And there's nothing there. Weak sauce. Weak sauce McGee. Puppet fails. I don't care about Puppet. I care about OPAM. Ah, yes, this is quite similar to that problem that I'm having. Yeah, I noticed, uh, let's read what this guy has to say. No oh, man. I noticed it seems like a strange inconsistency between OPAM and OPAM install. Uh, I cannot just pin that file. Yeah, whatever, it leads to strange errors. What I can do is pin folder, and that will pin all the OPAM folders. Blah, blah, blah. Uh, huh. They're not completely interchangeable. If you want to pin one of them, you have to pin. Uh, it's close. It's very close. Oh, this guy's. Get something with that. Yep. Aha! Well, we don't know if this is going to work, but they prefixed it with git. I'm almost certain that's not going to make any difference. Keyword almost. Git plus. That super worked. Oh man, that is disappointing. Uh, what was, was I reading the error wrong? Could not retrieve unknown archive type. Just by prefixing git, it took. That is disappointing. That is just a little disappointing. All right, well, I guess I'll do the next one like this too and uh, see what happens, so. Everyone's having a great time. Everyone is just having the best of times. All right, Postgres SQL's done. I now have to go do OCaml, OCaml LSP. I don't know why I have a custom resolution on this one. I don't think I need to. I do not think I need to, but it's too late for thinking. I'm already doing it. OCaml LSP. Camel L S P. Oh, let's make sure that even exists. Oh, camel. Oh, camel L S P. Ah, look at that. They actually have a specific command to run. Let's just run theirs. It shouldn't be this hard, and generally hasn't been. It's only because I'm trying to do this. What am I trying to do? I'm trying to do algebraic effects using a custom compiler because I like making my life uh, difficult and complicated, but very cool. I mean, who uses algebraic effects day to day? Nobody. Who should be using them? Maybe everybody. I'm going to find out. I'm on the bleeding edge. I'm the coolest guy in town. That's obnoxious. Come on. Come on, little buddy. You can do it. Get you, put you back into it. All right. Ugh. Hey, don't do that yet. Okay, then I want to just add everyone. I'm gonna add. Actually, I'm not even sure if you can add multiple buddies into an install. Oh, you super can. That's great. All right, great, 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 great. Next up is just to install the rest of these fools. And let's get rid of all of their malarkey. Very Joe Biden thing to say. You know, he doesn't have ownership on the term malarkey. He just popularized it. But, you know, I feel like I've been saying malarkey for a long time. So, go to hell, Joe Biden. All right. Uh, OPAM install all of these things. Ooh! What's up? Packages arguments is not valid. What is problem? Uh, uh, maybe let's clean this up a little bit. Maybe I don't need all these goofy little those things. Sure. Maybe these ats are problematic. Could be. Why does it keep doing that? Copy. Control C. Opam. 
install son of a bitch. Oh, it's Reason Native Console. Well, how do I just install Reason Native Console? Is that like not available on OPAM? What's going on? OPAM. Oh, Reason Native might only be distributed on NPM. Oh no! Reason Native. Oh no! What am I supposed to do? Not great. Not great. Uh. Damn it. Um. Hmm. Well, I could just stop using all my reason dependencies. That would be not the worst. Let's do that. This is no camel project. This isn't a reason project. Stop being a goofball. Stop using reason dependencies. This is what happens when you th you're clever and you do clever stuff. Bites you in the buttocks. Big bad buttocks. Alright. Console. I just have to find all the usages of console. And I can just change this one to print string. And I will do print string. And I will just get rid of this fancy color. As much as I enjoyed all of these beautiful colors. string concatenation action here and blammo and ooh uh hmm you know let's see if there's an ocaml package to replicate this functionality um console mm, it's a different use of console um debug debug adapter uh, not quite what I'm looking for. Um, print. Print plugin. Print project in various formats. Extension for print F format strings. Mm. OCaml pretty printer combinators. Uh, ooh! PPX syntax and expression library for printing values of any type. That sounds interesting. Right, it's called printf. This could be interesting. I don't quite understand. This library defines a syntax extension that allows for the use of user-defined string conversion functions. Oh, I see. That is kind of nice, but not what I'm looking for. Uh, format. Looks like this was released quite recently. Set up formatters for terminal color. The output depends on the Unix library. Not quite what I'm looking for. This one still sounds cool. Uh, a one function library and PPX extension to provide general value printing from anywhere within a program as opposed to the OCaml top level REP behavior of printing only evaluated expression results. Uh, used like so. PRV, PR arbitrary text with uppercase but no keywords, followed by the expression. Another form is a very interesting standard uh, Results in. Hmm. Hmm. Interesting. This could be it, but I'm just not sure enough. just isn't what I want to be working on right now. Uh, but, I'm, here I am still looking. Print PP, PP to whatever. Uh, not even at all what I want. You know, if the Reason ML dudes could not <laughs> uh, uh, 
they wouldn't have written a new one if it already existed in OCaml space. So maybe there's just an exception. Let's see if there's just a, a printer right after that. Um, core exception. Oh, I need to switch switches. OCaml. Select a sandbox for this workspace. Oh no. OCaml select sandbox not found. Let's reload the extension. Uh, hmm. OCaml restart language server. Oh, for crying out loud. Okay. Uh, oh, reload required. I wonder it's not working. Ah, oh, man, that's going to kill the database. I don't care. Okay, select a sandbox for this workspace, and now I need to set the multi core switch as the switch. And the OCaml language server's crashed five times in the last couple minutes. The server will not be restarted. Great. Just great. Everyone's having the best of times. Output. Why am I still dealing with this? This thing crashes all the time. I should probably help them and fix it. Um, okay. Uh, you know, I think I might know what's up. I think it I might have something to do with these settings. Oh! No, these settings are actually correct. It's an OPAM switch. Okay. Uh, exit code zero. Well, geez, it actually looks like everything exited with code zero, so I'm not sure why I was getting grouchy. Let's restart it. Um, problems? <laughs> What's the point of this problems friggin' tab? There's like never anything in there. Uh, this is just so annoying. Everything is saying it's happy, and you know, exit code zero. Let's clear it and then run it again. Make sure it's not old content. Let me start language server, please. Hmm. Okay, so we called OPAM exec switch. OCaml L LSP standard out was this weird hey wait a second. Wait a second. Five nine that looks sure looks like the GitHub SHA <laughs> of something we all know. Um five C nine one three eight. Let's go back to let's go back to OCaml LSP. Five nine C nine one three out. Looking familiar, everyone. How suspicious. Yeah, this thing's jacked. All right, so they called OPAM exec to switch this OCaml L. SP. This is surely our problemo. OPAM exec. What was it? Switch. And what did they call with the switch? I probably should have just copied and pasted that. They called dash dash OCaml language server protocol language server protocol fatal error during lock resource deadlock avoided thanks for nothing so here's the help for that thing on success parsing errors you know what I've also noticed ps aux lsp Oops, grep. What? No, it actually doesn't look like there's too many, um, too many installed. Let's come back here, 
exit and then do you know create a terminal for the current sandbox could not open a terminal for the current sandbox the tool chain may have not yet loaded I swear to Pete uh, when you use e this is whole algebraic effects and okay well, might be more trouble than it's worth everything else was just working so swimmingly until I decided to uh, oh okay image language serval versus platform extension two very different things uh-huh uh-huh resource deadlock avoided will restart ooh that's not good okay so that's consistent with um, the air that we got when just running this thing uh, locally. No, 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 no. Cool. Well, I can just search for this in their source code and figure out what's up. Um, yeah, I wouldn't even be surprised if this is a recent thing. So first off, let's come here. Ah, someone else is having this problem. Um, mutex, resource deadlock avoided, blah, blah, blah. Am I taking a look? I remember we previously discussed this piece of code. I'll look into this one, but I can't promise I'll be able to solve it. For what it's worth, OCaml, 412 might get type error checking mutex behavior and attempting to lock a mutex from that thread only earns this. Cool. It doesn't help me in the slightest. Um, I guess all. Okay, seeing this air on head and their hat, I think last time. Uh, let's just go get the commit. Copy. Yeah, I mean, terrible idea to install something from not a release, right? Like, that was a mistake. So um, I'm going to see if this just isn't published to OPAM. Like, why do I have to pit install it from uh, Git? That, that seems like a bad idea. So uh, what's this thing called? LSP, OCaml LSP. Let's see if there's an OPAM file. Yeah, LSP. That gets all over the place. There's a couple. Ooh, there are a couple OPAM files, though. And I don't know what OPAM's going to do with that. So let's just see if LSP shows up. It does, but not the stuff we're looking for. This is not the stuff we're looking for. So I'm going to go and look in their commit history. Oops, wrong commit history. <sighs> wrong commit history. And it looks like... Um, you know, there's been some updates. I'm hoping to like pick something that indicates stable. You know, uh, uh, yeah, yeah. I could probably pick something like this one. This one looks like it didn't get touched for a couple days, um, but there are some bug fixes. Yeah, let's try this one. I'm gonna try this one. Right. So they say pin this. Well, I don't think so, bros. Uh, OPAM switch dash V. Let's make sure I'm still on the right switch. And I'm going to go back in time, history, git. And let's go ahead and add this nice shot to the end of it. Try regressing. The following actions will be performed. Recompile the OCaml language server protocol server. Dev. Sure. I would be delighted if you would just recompile that ish. That would be just 
dandy. Whew. Removed installed. Wonderful. All right. Let's watch it crash again. Who's into watching stuff crash? Restart the language server protocol. You don't crash yet? There you go. There's my crashing little buddy. Piece of shit. Sorry. 752. Okay. Server. Resource deadlock avoided. All right. I got to search their source to see what they're doing. Like, what is it trying to access that's making it choke on this, making it get to a deadlock? It's probably looking for some, like, file resource or something. Issues commits code. Uh. Okay. Uh. Someone's using a mutex. How could they? Let's see where they're using the mutex. Scheduler lock mutex mutex. But what specifically is it doing? Such that it needs to acquire the mutex. Okay, scheduler, fiber, fiber. Looks like we got a couple of mutices, mutexes. Joking with the mutices. Mutex. With mutex. Mutex unlock. So somebody's calling probably with mutex. Let's see who is calling it in the issue. Race by primitive. Scheduler. Scheduler. RPC. You know what? I'm even going to go way back in time and install this one. Someone reported it and said they went back in time fixed it by going to a commit. Why didn't I do the same? Because I'm a fool. That's why. Looking like a damn fool, Happy. Interesting. It has to recompile a bunch of other stuff. Uh, I wonder if that's because they share transitive dependencies. Yeah, it looks like there's this thing called logs. I haven't used logs before. Alright. Here we go. Select the right sandbox again, make sure we're there. Global switch. Tool chain. Initialization failed. Unknown. Option version. Sure. Uh, no, 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 no. Reload. Oh, camel. Oh, camel. Okay, so. Um, I don't care enough about this to continue. <laughs> like, I really want to use algebraic effects, but um, this tool chain sucks, and it's super not worth it. So, I'm not going to deal with it anymore. So, I'm just going to pass my data through, like a good classy cofunctional programmer, and figure out multicoro camel later. Uh, this is too aggravating. So I'm going to do select the sandwich for this workspace, and I'm going to go back to easy. Easy will once again be my package manager of choice. I am then going to try and restart the language server. And I got no errors this time. I got no errors this time. Let's clear it. No errors. And it must be running because, look, I'm able to navigate files again. Yeah, that's like just disappointing, you know? Easy just works. So red S should still start the server. Whoops. Uh, syntax error. Whoops, on line 54. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I forgot a function. Alright, looks like it's going to start up again, and everyone's happy. Cool. So I'm actually going to revert the changes I made to this 
to drop all of that nice reason stuff because that reason stuff is so pretty. Yeah, great. It's back. It's back better than ever. So uh, that sucks. That just like burned a ton of time for no good reason. Um, yeah. So anyway, uh, I'm gonna update this function to be called start server, and only if the uh, is server flag is present will I call that one. So I'm gonna say match. Um, Uh, uh, yeah, let's do match is server is agent is it's probably a better way to do this, but is agent is server and if I don't care if it's the agent, but if is server is true, go do start server, which is looking pretty good. And then, otherwise, if it's true, not the right thing here. This variant pattern is expected to have type kernel. Oh, it's an option. Do yo 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 yo. Yeah, I need to do value is agent or uh, default is false. Value. Is server default it's going to be false and then if true console.log do agenty things otherwise throw an exception raise um, Raise, um, don't I have a generic exception in here? I'll just declare a new exception. Let uh, exception invalid init of string. Uh, that's not how you do it. Exception. I always forget the syntax for this. Dope. Exception. Uh, oh, for crying out loud. I'll just copy it from somewhere else. Exception. Exception symbol of type. Exception. And actually, that's. init error is what I want. Oh, that's interesting. That almost makes me feel like it should live in um, libcode. Uh, yeah, 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 yeah. Let's just call this constants. It's probably a terrible name. But I'm going to go ahead and bring init error over into constants module. And then I'm going to do constants.init error. And everyone's going to be stoked with that. And then over here, I'm going to do the same. I'm going to do uh, raise lib constants init air agent or server must be specified. Cool. And that should be a full expression. That should be a thing. So let's compile it again, get all the good errors. Of course, I've forgotten a paren. Sure. All right, what's next? Uncaught exception. Agent or server must be specified. Well, actually, that's entirely true. I just ran it without specifying one of those, so I just reached this condition. Uh, that's good. So I need to update my start script. Um, red start 
easy exec dune fresh exe. And let's go ahead and add a server onto that. Missing argument for flag server. Huh. Uh, missing argument for flag server. Well, it's a flag, and it says it needs. Let's see, let's read the flag docs. Full flag required? It's probably a thing. Unless full flag required is used, one doesn't have to pass name. One doesn't have to pass name. If name is not prefixed with. I just want to be able to pass, I don't want to have to pass any values to flag, right? Uh, string, flag, what am I, what's even going on? This doesn't even look like the right docs. Spec flag, spec flag takes a flag internal, aliases name mode, alias is excluded from help, doc, did I pass anything for mode? I don't know, let's actually just run this thing with help. Dune, no, no, no. Easy, x, dune, exec, bin, fresh, help. Oh, right, you actually need to be dash help and exe. Right, okay. This is jacked. Port server? <laughs> That's wrong. Uh, port default. Weird, it's like taking this. Port. that going to look like? Yeah, there we go. Number, number, number. How interesting. Server. Run as server. So what the heck? Doc? Um, yeah, help. These are the ones I want. Right? I don't want one of these, like, single flags. So do I want a non? Oh, choose one. That's kind of interesting. I do want to choose one. Hilarious. Hilarious name for it. Uh, what is this friggin' package? Core command. Let's go and read the stupid API docs. Core command. Docs command and the full API is browsable here. And then what's what I'm after? Command core command. Uh, yeah, param param. Hmm. Do not use stuff from spec. That's interesting. Okay, so command frame is intended to be used with map open, which I am doing. And I don't want an anonymous arg. I do want a flag. Port optional int person parent. Uh, yep. Age, name. Uh, it's not required. various internal values. Uh, flag name spec. Flag name spec. You know, I'm gonna, I guess I wanna be idiomatic with these guys. They always put their doc at the end. So let's be cool dudes. 
I want to be a cool dude. How do I become a cool dude? Okay. Now, interestingly, they also don't specify dashes like that. I wonder what's up. Okay. Port optional int. Uh, ooh, I wonder if arg type. Yeah. Yeah. This isn't optional. This should be like. Yeah, I want to get to arg type. No arg. Haha! There it is. That's what I wanted. No arg. Nice try, jerks. I knew I'd figure you out. Port. Uh, Alright, here we go. This is going to work now. Okay, so let's just... <laughs> uh, right, right. I don't have to use... Wait, what's the problem? Is agent is just a bool. Yeah, that's great. I thought that was a little heavy-handed to have to use value to unpack an option type argument. But of course, if there's no arg, I don't have to do any sort of monadic unpacking. Blaven! All right, cool. Now, almost done. One of these isn't being totally rad. And I think we all know what it means to be totally rad. So, let's now do the red thing. Red S. Pew. And look at that. Works, super works. Now if I do start and change it to the agent flag, it should just log and exit, I hope. I'm like, what's up? Do the agent V thing. God, OCaml's the best. I mean, OPAM kind of sucks, but man, OCaml, so good. I just love it. It's a delight. An absolute delight. Let's run the formatter. Do some cool shit. All right, looks like it did some cool stuff. That's fine. It exits with code zero when it like, or code one when it actually does something, which is kind of a weird behavior. Um, but so what? Auto formatter. Okay, cool. So let's commit that. Git add. Uh, git commit, uh, feet, improve, arg parsing for server mode versus agent mode. Sick. Uh, I really hope this dude writes me back and gives me a recipe on how to do rigging. Multi-core compiler with easy. Uh, that would be so much better. Or that would be just exciting to do. Okay, so, uh, 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 you know, uh, we got a config. It's great. And this is a server config. That's cool. Um, truth be told, there's probably also we're going to want to do a config for, um, you know, agent mode. And those should be two different configs. So perhaps what I can do, and I'm not 100% sure if this is going to work, but maybe I can just put this config directly, this record directly on to this thing. And no, it's unhappy. Why is it unhappy? Uh, what? <laughs> uh, what's the problem? Oh, there's two ends. That's, that's a problem. Let's get rid of that. Hey, well, that worked. Let's try that. Very cool, very cool. It's going to start. Sweet. Um, so something super dope about OCaml here is that, um, uh, you know, I didn't specify a type for this record, but it just it knew. It inferred. Um, and look, it even knew that it was a lib fresh server config, even though I did no type annotation because we're adults and we can do cool stuff in adulthood. Alright, 
let's get rid of that. And, and what I like about that is that, like, you know, now I don't have to build up a generic config, one for the agent and one for the server. It's just much more focused and narrow. You know, um, yeah. Now, truth be told, the server doesn't care at all about the aware endpoint. So I shouldn't be passing it through there. So let's go to fresh server. We're just going to trash this. And hopefully it doesn't compile anymore. Good. Hey, this doesn't belong in the record. Great. You're absolutely right. Unused variable. Yeah, dude. I know there's an unused variable. Cool. Um, so what do I need the server to do? What do I want to work on next? What do I want to work on next? Right, it needs to actually start respecting the port, for starters. Uh, I think we already did that, though. Uh, did we already do it? Start config port. Yep, we did. Cool, so now we need to actually activate agent mode. So what is the agent? The agent is just like, you know, it's, it's going to be a timer. It's going to like do something on a cron. Um, and I could just use, ouch, a, you know, ooh, pain in shoulder from shooting hoops. Um, could just use, like, schedule an event, and then do work, and then schedule another event. But uh, that runs the risk of some clock drift, and not that I need a precise clock, but um, I'm not interested in that clock drift, just knowing that it's an inferior design. So I'm going to just see if there's some sort of, like, cron thing I can use. Cron tab, that's for probably meddling with a proper system cron thingy, uh, which I'm not interested in doing. Uh, but if it just let me do crony things, that would be cool cron tab of string, and I could give it a string, and what would it return to me? Uh, what would it return to me? Map of entry, let lines, instar split input, list flat, map i of uh, maybe entry string. Yeah, I'm not interested in that. This is like doing proper stuff. I don't want to do that. Uh, how about a scheduler? A schedule, time, and time slots. Handing, handling library. Also, Coclo Bass is a scheduler for HPC-like jobs accessible through HTTP. Uh, I'm going to look at Daypack first. Uh, don't use this. Let's definitely look at it. There's a schedule, time slots library, details. Automatic scheduling. Recurrence. Time patterns. More for devs. Yeah, this actually sounds kind of uh, what I'm into, huh? Yeah, okay, it doesn't have a user manual, that's fine. Uh, maybe he's got some tests we can look at. Time pattern, time slot, scheduled version. Actually, let's go to sketch. QC. What? Day pack. Whoa, look at all this OCaml. Key check test make. Count 5,000. Oh, God. Whatever this is doing is like, uh, probably more than what I'm looking for. 
I might as well just write my own. Koklo boss. Using Koklo boss. It's a CLI, huh? Oh god. No, man. Alright. It's not what I want. Uh, let's see. Maybe there's a um, clock. Atomic, monotonic wall clock time for a camel. Precise POSIX clock for a camel. POSIX clock. You know, I have written a scheduler before. I did it in TypeScript. Sample programs. If you installed MTime with OPAM, they're located inside the directory OPAM config var MTime doc. Let's go to the tree. Doc. This is probably as good a time as any to call it. This is certainly the least productive session we've had doing OCaml. That's okay. You can't win them all. Still learned a couple things, but uh, yeah. Catch you later. That was fun. See ya.